Hello friends, this is Scott and we're down here at the homestead and uh, we're going to talk today about winter chicken keeping and uh, all the important dynamics that are involved in making sure that you have a healthy flock through the winter. Now I've owned chickens for 30 years. I've been a suburban chicken owner so I've always you know generally been home and been able to check on them daily and making sure everything's okay but down here at the homestead I am down here quite a bit but I'm not down here all of the time so I've got to make sure that I'm prepared uh, for for this chicken experience. Now I've owned the homestead for, this will be the third winter, and this is the first winter that I've ever had chickens down here, and there's a reason for that. It's uh, because of preparation, okay? You've gotta be prepared. I see a lot of people that get into chickens and they're not prepared, they haven't done any research, they just buy them, and then they just gotta figure out everything about a chicken after they've already got the chicken. Well, that's a recipe for disaster, and uh, especially when you're out here in, the, in colder temperatures. Um, the, hob, or the homestead is zone 5B, which can get down to minus 15. And that's not a common occurrence, but that's kind of what can happen. In Salt Lake, it's more of a 6A or 6B, which is you know anywhere from zero to five degrees below zero. And uh, we generally don't get down to the zero point very often, uh, maybe once a season, maybe once every couple of years. But all that matters is that it can. And something that can will, and uh, yeah, you gotta be prepared for all of these things. Now, my first winter down here was rough, okay? We had literally five feet of snow in my front yard. And uh, I'm glad I did not have chickens because I was not, even though I've had chickens for 30 years, I wasn't prepared to have chickens down here. And uh, winter is a different, is a different beast uh, when it comes to chicken owning and you've got to be careful and you've got to be, you know, you've got to be ready to have them or you're going to be in deep doo-doo and your chickens are going to suffer or potentially die. So, so what I'm going to do today is a little longer video. I'm going to go through all the things that I could brainstorm about, about chicken owning and what you need to do to keep them healthy in the winter. And again, this is my first winter down here, but it's only, you know, you know, a five degree difference from what I what I had in Salt Lake City. So I'm, I'm pretty prepared and I've you know, worked hard all summer, if you've been watching my videos, to be prepared uh, for this experience to get the chickens down here. So I wanna talk about different dynamics that I'm gonna show you how my pen set up in my house and uh, so that these chickens will be fine all winter long. So let's take a look. So here's my chicken setup. And if you watch my videos this summer and fall, I built this six by six coop which isn't huge, but it's well, it's gonna fit the, the dynamics of the chickens that I'm gonna have down here, which I'll discuss in detail a little bit later in this video. So the house is six by six, which is 36 square feet. Let's take a look inside. And you see there's a little bit of venting in the door. I'll be talking about some of that. And there's one of my barn of elders. But this coop has just three nest boxes. It's got two perches, which I'll talk about individually. I've got a light here for them, and I've got a heated water base, which is the most critical point. I'm gonna start talking about water as the number one thing first off. And then I have some food, and I've got the food out here, okay? And then if you come in here and look, as you see the chickens have a door to go through here and to get out to the pen. And as we come to the pen, it's a six by 10 pen and it's got a cover on it, which is you know, somewhat problematic in the winter with the weight of the snow, but it protects the chickens. Okay, I've got a nice run here. I have my summer water here, which is worthless now. It's a, one of those nipple waters that has the water on the bottom and it's frozen solid. So that's not gonna be of any good. So when I talk about redundancy of, of systems, uh, I've got to work on my water because I do not have a redundancy right now. I do have an extra feeder out here. It's one of those cone feeders, and they don't like it. They don't eat out of this hardly at all, but it's here. And then we have some uh, eggshell. And then the other one's falling down, but that has grit in it. So, you, you know, chickens need grit to digest their food. Uh, so we always want to have grit. And... I think I'm probably out of grit. Oh, I just got calcium in here too. So I've got to buy some grit or just get some grit. They do have access to the dirt, so they do have stones. So everything's fine. But again, a six by six house, which is 36 square feet. And a six by 10 pen is 60 square feet. So they get 96 square feet of space in the winter. And again, right now I have three chickens. You see two here. And as I go around, the other one's in the pen, getting a drink of water, looks like. That's the Americana. So she's enjoying the getting a drink. So important to note is I have my supplies, my chicken supplies right here by the coop, okay? Because I don't want to be trying to haul heavy materials out here when there's tons of snow, because again, we had five feet of snow at one point uh, a couple of years ago. 
and that makes uh, makes it really difficult to care for these chickens. But I have all the materials I need out here, and I have some extra supplies in the garage. I make sure I'm stocked up for winter in case something really bad happens and I can't access the store. I have enough to keep them keep them alive through the winter. Like I was saying, you always have to have a little backup of feed in the winter. And I don't have a ton, but I've got two bags of layer feed, and I've got one poultry scratch. So that should last me for several months. So with preparation, the next consideration is kind of how many chickens do you want to have? What is feasible for you? A lot of people, when you get chickens, they tend to multiply. So, you know, you think you're going to get a couple, and then you end up getting, you know, 30. So you want to make a coop that's going to be big enough for what your plans are or potential for, you know, kind of an increase. Uh, I've had chickens long enough. I know that, you know, I don't need any more than at the most 12 chickens. Okay, so the talking heads say that three square feet per bird is the ideal, or at least the minimum ideal. So again, I have a 36 square foot coop, so I could have 12 chickens and that they should fit comfortably in there. And then also I have that uh, 60 square feet pen, which you can add onto that square footage. So the chickens have enough room to get around and move around. And then in the summers, I let them out of the pen a lot. And uh, you know, they've, they've got the whole yard pretty much. You know, it depends on the gardening time of season and, and uh, what I have in the ground and what I want to keep the chickens from destroying. But they have a pretty good life in the summer. But in the winter months, uh, you know, they don't like to come out of the coop. They just kind of sit in the coop and try to stay warm. And so, you know, you got to have the right size of pen for the chickens. You need to have water. Okay, water is the number one thing that chickens need. Okay, more than food, more than shelter, more than anything. If you don't have uh, water, you are have dead chickens. So how do you keep water as a consideration in the winter? And it's very difficult. So as I showed you in my pen earlier, when I just showed you the brief little tour, is I have a heated water base in there. It's got a five gallon water bucket there. And right now I only have three chickens. So water and redundancy of water is not really a, an important thing for me right now. Now redundancy means multiple systems so that in case one fails, you have something else to you know, make sure your birds are gonna be okay. So this winter, you know, I, do, I didn't add a bunch of chickens in the fall because I wanted to get through the first winter to see how kind of things are gonna go. And I don't have another water system. You know, I could buy another heated water base and put it somewhere else in the coop or out in the pen and cover it up so it's, it's you know, not electrocution <laughs> risk. But, but right now, uh, five gallons of water, I could be gone for a considerable period of time. These chickens will not go through five gallons of water. Now, you know, timely anyway. Now, if the power goes out, we got a problem. And that's uh, something that I have to come up with in, uh, in the future for redundancy. I need some type of a solar system and some kind of a charger so that it'll, as a backup. And so that's something that I'm still going to need to work toward because right now my chickens, you know, my water does not have redundancy in the winter. In the summer, I have multiple waters. So yeah, I got plenty of redundancy. I could be gone for a long period of time, <clears throat> excuse me. But here in the winter, I only have one. So I've got to work on that. That's something I need to focus on in the future. Now, there are some videos on YouTube that will show you how to dig a hole and insulate it. And you can use the, the Earth's heat to keep water uh, from freezing. You know, I haven't tried that yet. Uh, down here, it's cold enough that I think that might be problematic, but it's still something that I can, uh, you know, I can explore in the future. But uh, that is something that I still need to work on the redundancy aspect of that. In summer, I'm great, but in the, in the winter, I'm not so great. Okay, the other thing they need is food. Okay, I have redundancy of food. I showed you the two feeders. I've got a feeder that's underneath the nest boxes that's covered. Uh, chickens are notorious for getting on top of feeders and pooping in their feed. So by sticking it under the nest boxes, they can't get on top of it, which will keep the food uh, you know, clean. And it's one of those feeders, you just fill it up and, and uh, they'll eat down and that thing will last, especially with just three chickens, that'll last for a long, long time. Now, the more birds you have, you know, the, the, the more time that, or the less time you have to be gone. So that's a big consideration. But I have two feeders, so in case something would happen, I couldn't get down here. I've got enough food here that they'll be fine for weeks, literally, you know, with this amount of birds. If you have more birds, that's not the case. If I had 12 birds in here, uh, that feeder's gonna get emptied in a couple days. And so that's a big consideration for me in the winter is I'm gonna have to have more feeders to make sure that I have enough food in case if something happens that I can't be, I can't be here. Or next best thing is you, you, know, you meet your neighbor kids and you, you know, get to know them and trust them and you get them to come over and check on your chickens. Because that's always an option is to have somebody help you. Again, I'm a homestead of one down here most of the time. I love my neighbors, they're great people, but I'm kind of, again, I don't mind like bothering other people. So I want to design my system so that it's going to be foolproof, so that hopefully foolproof, you know, other than me, so that the chickens will be fine if, uh, you know, worst case scenario, I'm gone for longer than I expect to be gone. So that's important. So the food is a big deal. I feed them a layer mash and a lot of people feed, you know, crumbles mash or pellets. You decide uh, protein content is important. My birds are older, uh, so the protein content really isn't that important because they're not laying as much. 
and uh, the calcium in it is not as important because they're not using up calcium by making eggs. They're just kind of, you know, freeloaders right now. They're not doing much. But if you have a younger flock, you need to make sure that you're that they're eating the majority of their food in in whatever the the layer material is that you get from the feed stores. Whether you vaccinate your chickens or or have you know antibiotics in your chickens or other type of food additives, that's up to you. A lot of people don't like that. I don't know. I just like healthy chickens, and I think that's the that's the most important thing for me. I'm not hardcore in in the whole organic movement necessarily, but I try to be as organic as, as I can possibly be. Now, another consideration is the type of breed of chicken that you have, and that's an important one. Uh, again, I'm 5B down here zone, and I'm zone 6 up in Salt Lake, 6A or 6B. You know, we get cold, and we also get very, very hot. So if, we, if I go out and get a breed of chicken that's not hardy for this climate, then I'm just going to have dead chickens. So, again, people are worried about the cold with chickens, and they always say, oh, do you need to put a heat lamp? you need to put a heat lamp? You do not need a heat lamp in the lower 48 states, okay? Maybe up in the very northern uh, part of the United States, into Canada or Alaska, you might need a heat lamp. But what you gotta understand is I have a heat lamp for the chickens, okay? It's in the garage. That heat lamp only heats a very small area, okay? So this 36 square foot coop, I could put a heat lamp in here and it'd probably be just fine, but these chickens are hardy breeds. You know, they're, not, they're, be they're built for this weather. They do much better in cold than they do hot. I'm much more worried about the chickens having ventilation in the summer than cold in the winter. Now let's talk about shelter. I talked about the square footage per bird. Now my house, okay, what it needs to be, it needs to be big enough, it needs to have perches, which I showed you there so the birds can get up off the ground. They like to perch off the ground. It needs to have water that's in there so that they can get to it without having to go out of the coop in the winter. In the summer, I can move the water out, not a big deal. And the food should be in the coop too because uh, you know they don't like to venture out very much. And sometimes it's so cold and, and windy and wet you want your chickens to be able to access uh, what they need, the basics, inside the coop. Now, my nest boxes are also inside the coop, so if I ever do get any eggs from these chickens anymore, I can just open the door and reach in there and get them. You know, outside access to eggs is nice with those little, you know, hatches, but that's something that I've uh, I've always kind of opened the door anyway because chickens lay in different areas every day, so you got to kind of get in the coop and check things out. So those little outside boxes are nice with lids, but uh, they're, you got to get in the coop anyway, so no big deal. I built my coop so I could walk into it. Uh, a lot of people will debate whether you want to be able to walk into a coop or want to even walk into a coop. From having chickens with all different types of houses, I want to walk in my coop, especially for cleaning. I want to get in there and I want to be able to stand up and be comfortable working. Uh, if you have a mobile chicken tractor or something, you can just pull them around the yard and, and you, you don't have to worry about the mess because you're leaving it where you left your coop. With a static coop though, I won't have a static coop unless I can uh, anymore unless I can get into the coop. And that's very important for me. So, so yeah, ease of cleaning is a big deal because you need to keep it clean. Now, let's talk about the uh, bedding in the coop. You hear about the deep litter system a lot, and I'm going to show you here uh, in a second that uh, I'll show you what that means. So it doesn't mean you just take a whole bunch of, of, of pine shavings or, or straw or whatever and just throw it all in there at the beginning of the season. It means that you're going to start with the layer, and then as the chickens you know poop and, and, and manure in that material, you're going to keep layering it, keep layering it. What that does is that'll actually start creating a little bit of a composting situation and that'll cr create a little bit of heat. But you don't want to do all the material in at once, you want to just kind of layer it, layer it, layer it. Kind of like the lasagna method with gardening. That way the material's mixed through and you don't want to, you don't want to stir it up a lot because it, you know chickens are very dusty uh, anyway. You know, um, so you don't want to be trying to you know turn material when you have waters and food in there because you're just getting in, you know the dust they're breathing is or the air they're breathing is going to be all dusty. So you just want the chickens to manure, and then you take uh, wood shavings and you just cover it up. So let's take a look at that right now. And if you don't realize that coops are very dusty with all the dander from the feathers and just kicking up dirt and dust, is uh, I left my my uh, pellet gun out here uh, to deal with some of the mice and. Yeah, we should have done that. Doesn't look like because uh, yeah, it's a mess. So. Yep, we got lots of dander from the, you know, it's funny when you have chicks, you know, you don't realize that you'll have layers of dust in your house because uh, when they're you know, putting on their feathers, they uh, they put out a lot of dander. We're back to my storage cans on the side here. I just want to show you what I have in each, or in this storage can right here. I'm not sure you all show you individually, but here is the wood shavings I use. I just use the pine shavings you get in the bags. And this material is what I use for my deep litter system inside the, the house. I don't use it for the pan. I use other materials, which I'll show you later, but that's the best stuff. You want it to be dry and clean and you want it to absorb and you want it to have a good little bit of a fresh smell. Because one thing chickens uh, don't like is the ammonia that builds up uh, from 
from being in their coop. And ventilation's a big deal, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but let's uh, grab some of these shavings and I'll show you the deep litter system. So as you see here, the Americana's still hanging out in here, uh, pecking around for food, which there isn't much here. Okay, but as you notice, there's manures in the, especially underneath the perches. Okay, and what happens is these chickens just kind of poop and they sit on those perches and most of their poop is during the night. And so they have lots of manure and uh, you don't want that ammonia building up. You also notice that this water has got very little water in it, but it's also kind of dusty. Okay, so it's very critical that you dump that water out every day. And when you're here, at least you can't when you're obviously gone, but you want to make sure it's full and you want to make sure it's unfrozen. And the only way you can keep your water unfrozen, really, in this cold of a climate is to have a heated water base, which is what you see here. Okay, so what happens is it has a little thermostat in it, so it's, it's plugged in all the time. And then uh, when it gets cold to a certain temperature, it'll warm up and keep that water from freezing. Now, metal on metal is, is what it does, so that's how it freezes, or how it keeps it from freezing. There's other types of uh, heaters that you can buy that involve plastic and those types of things, but they work a little differently. But this is metal on metal. And again, there's a fire hazard anytime you bring electricity into the coop, so it's something to be aware of. I've had these types of... Uh, you know, bottom heaters for ever, pretty much, since I've had chickens, I've never had an issue with them. Other than they do rot out over time, you need to inspect them, or you'll have problems potentially, and, and could cause a fire. You just never know. But look at the bedding. But again, I didn't load this up with tons of material right now, okay? But as we climb in here, and again, I like to, again, access to the coop is very important. I don't, I don't want to have to, you know, Stoop down and do all those things, okay? I am stooping now just to video this, but uh, I don't want to have to do that. So I can stand up in this coop and I'm good, okay? So let's take the deep litter again as, they, as, as the manure builds up a little bit. You start smelling ammonia. You just take your bucket and grab some shavings and you just layer. Okay? That's all you need to do. Just cover those up. Again, having mixed manure is the way you want to go because that's how you want the, to break down into compost. Now, smells are, you know, ammonia is an important thing in the winter to be careful of. Obviously, it's not good to be breathing, but uh, you'll know, have other types of uh, diseases and insects and things like that. Not a problem in the winter. The temperatures keep it pretty, pretty good. So you don't have to worry really about diseases too much. You can put a little apple cider vinegar in the water if you want or other types of electrolytes to help them. But uh, I don't generally do that. It's not even necessary. I do keep the nest boxes clean. But these chickens are not using the nest boxes because they're not laying any eggs right now. So I'll, I'll put some in there if I need it. Now, ventilation in a coop is very important. Okay. And uh, in the summer, I'm going to add more vents. But in the winter, I want it to be pretty, pretty secure and not a lot of air movement through the coop. You know, you don't want drafts. That's what chickens can't handle. You want them to be dry and you want to have them out of the wind. And that's the most important thing with a shelter. But I have the door there, it's got a vent. I'm not tight on the top of the roof, so there's some venting there. The other side's pretty tight, not much here. Right now, I do just have a hole where the water cord comes through. And then I have the door going out to the pan. So there's air movement in here. In the summer, I don't believe it's adequate, so I will need to be putting some more vents, probably along the eaves. Yeah, they sell some little round vents, they're probably three or four inches. I'll just put several of those on each side. Again, you know, we want air movement, but you want the vents to be higher than the birds so that the, they're not getting drafted. Okay, again, dry birds out of the wind can withstand lots of cold temperatures. So that's the most important thing to remember about your about this, this structure that you need to have. If you don't have the structure, you're gonna have you know unhealthy birds or dead birds. Another common question I get about chickens is they seem to always molt when it's getting cold. And molting is simply they're just losing their feathers so they can grow new ones. Now, it is uncomfortable for them at times because they, uh, yeah, they do molt at weird times of the season. And so that's something you got to also keep in, in consideration. You definitely want to have them in a nice warm place or at least a non-drafty place because, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be losing feathers and they'll be a little bit cold for a while. Another but, common question is light or heat lamps in a coop. Now, again, this is a 36 square foot coop. If I put a heat lamp in here, it probably would warm this place up a little bit, but unless the temperatures get crazy, it's not necessary. And again, heat lamps are not that efficient in heating. This is an uninsulated coop other than the plywood. So it would only heat a very small area. So, you know, yeah, and it's a fire hazard if you put heat lamps into, into places. This one's secure, so I could do it. 
So we'll see how it goes, but I don't think there's any need to, to use heat lamps. Chicken, again, chickens love cold. They don't like hot. So uh, yeah, but yeah, I like to have light. Now talking about light, Liz laying eggs, okay? Chickens, if you have good chickens, which I don't, will lay eggs all through the winter if they have supplemental light. And uh, the, I guess it all involves the amount of light in a chicken's retina when they're, you know, decides how long they, they'll lay eggs. And once the daylight shortens, uh, they quit laying eggs. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a debate there whether you want your chickens to be stressed out all summer and winter laying eggs. A lot of times you get a calcium deficiency and start getting some differences in the eggs uh, where the shells are not hard. A lot of people will just let their chickens kind of go dormant, you know, not worry about the egg production. They'll lay occasionally and just let them build up the calcium back in their bodies for the for the heavier laying season. Again, chickens are only good for a couple laying seasons. The first year is their, their biggest laying uh, year. The second year will be a little less, and then it, it drastically reduces after that. But light is something I use all, all winter long. I don't like them in a dark coop. They stay in the coop most of the time, so I just leave the light on. They sleep with the light on, and it's not right in their eyes. Uh, it's 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 fairly it's, it's fairly decent, you know. I mean, I'm over here; it's daylight, so you can't really tell. But it's not the brightest light in the world. It's just a, a 60 watt bulb, again, not for heat, just to uh, give them the ability to look around and find their food and water in the in the dark months. Let's take a little cl closer look at their feed. And again, it's getting down, but you see, this feed has adequate. Because I have a noisy uh, friend with me here. This feed container contains a lot of food. I don't know if it's, you know, five, ten gallons. But uh, with three chickens, this will last forever. So, well, not forever, but literally for a long time. So, so this feeder I can fill up, and I could go weeks without refilling it. But again, I have the tube filter out in the back or on, in the pen, so I have extra food for them. I also feed them scratch grain, which I'll throw out into the pen. So that gives them some activities and something to do because boredom is something that we all we all face and chickens uh, are no different. Boxes only need to be about a foot, foot by foot or a little, these are even a little less, I think they're 11 by 11. You might wanna have you know, one nest box for maybe three birds. So think about that. I may be one nest box too few, but again, I have a 36 square foot coop and I didn't wanna put any more, uh, any more nest boxes in here. So that'll be fine. They share the nest boxes and sometimes you'll find two or even more trying to lay an egg in the same box. but. That's just chickens. They're a, they're a social creature. You don't ever have one chicken. Okay? They're a flock animal. Okay, I don't like having two. I like to have at least three. Because what will happen is, you know, there's a pecking order and some chickens just don't like other chickens, but they can, they can get along with others. So if you have three, you have the possibility that every chicken has a friend, <laughs> possibly, or at least some other chicken that they can associate with. You know, introducing new birds is not something I'll do in the winter, but that's a whole other video we'll talk about uh, when summer comes, because I'll be raising some new birds, whether I buy adults, buy chicks and raise them, or just buy pullets, which are more in, you know, immature hens that you just raise to a certain age, and then introduce them into your flock when they're ready to, uh, you know, take care of themselves and protect themselves a little bit. So here's a look at what scratch grain looks like. And again, I have more in the truck, but it's just, you know, it's just different types of, of grains. And uh, you don't want this to be the main food for your chickens. You want it to be more of a treat. You can soak this material, which a lot of people do. In the summer, I might do some of that, but in the winter, I don't generally. But I just sprinkle it on to the bedding, which in this case is just a bunch of leaves that I put in here. And that gives the chicken something to do. You know, these will sprout when, when the temperature warms up, whatever they miss. But this will they'll kick through this material. And, uh, yeah, boredom is something that is a big deal. And uh, this gives them some activity, gives them some exercise. And uh, they're forage animals. They like to... Uh, to look for bugs and look for worms and and also grains that, and uh, or any type of green material you put in here. Now winter is a big problem having green material, so I take my kitchen scraps and I bring those out here and give it to them. And I'll give them all their old eggshells, any spoiled produce, those things like that. I don't put you know, meats and dairies and those type of things, although they do like milk. So you can put milk in and they'll enjoy that as a nice treat, it's a nice calcium boost. And for laying chickens, you know, calcium is a very important component. You know, their food, if you buy it from the feed store, will have that kind of you know, material in it, minerals. These are just oyster shells. And so you can pick those up and, and supply. It's, it's you know, self-feeding. So they'll, when they need it, they'll come eat it. So I have a little feeder here that you can put anything in here. You can put rocks for grit, or you can just put the oyster shell or whatever else you want to put in here. And they'll just uh, come get it when they need it. You know, animals seem to know what they need and they'll eat it when they, uh, when they want it. I'll look at perches for a minute. A lot of people will put in the right, wrong size of diameters of perches, and that can hurt the chicken's feet. As you see here, this is just a, you know, I guess it's a two by two. What I've done is I took sandpaper and I, and I 
sand it off the sides, okay? Chicken's feet like to curl around the bar. If it's too narrow, that's uncomfortable for the chickens. It puts too much pressure on the very top of their foot. And if you use a full two by four, their feet aren't used to this laying flat. Let's take a look at this chicken here. So this chicken is about right. That's about what they like. They like their toes to kind of curl down. But uh, yeah, they like to be comfortable because they're sitting on their perches for long extended periods of time. And you want to make sure that the chicken's feet are comfortable. And uh, if you put too wide or too narrow of a perch or too sharp of edges, you're going to be hurting your chicken's feet. We talked about why I moved the uh, all of the compost bins earlier this year was because of mice and insects. And again, insects are not something I'm going to worry about inside the, the coop necessarily, unless they're lice, uh, those type of, of Little tiny, tiny bugs will, will get on the chickens and that'll be a problem. Have to use some, uh, what they call diatomaceous earth, which is just, it's kind of microscopic little sharp little edged creatures that will kill those soft body little insects. But you put those in a dust bath or you can sprinkle it out in the coop, as you see right there. They like to, they like to dust bathe. And uh, yeah, they like to clear the dirt and they get down in there and, and uh, dust themselves. And that's how they keep themselves clean. If I have ever have a lice issue or anything like that, I just need to throw some diatomaceous earth in a either a, a, a box that I prepare for them with dirt in it to dust bathe, or just put it where they're naturally dust bathing, and that'll help with those with any of those types of issues. I've only had mites and lice I think once, and it was a weird, really weird situation because every time I was in the in the house, I would I would itch when I got out. It was just strange, and then I figured out there was there was a, a mite issue. So. Yeah, they're uh, they're real. I thought I was going crazy, but uh, yeah, I found out that they do exist, and they do even get on you if you're if you're in the pen too much with them there. But diatomaceous earth is a good way to uh, to deal with them, and uh, they'll just do it through their natural dust bathing. One thing I wish I would have had of this coop in the winter is a place for the sun to shine. As you see, this is a covered house and a covered pen, and they really don't have a place to have the sun bake, hit them unless the sun's really low in the sky. They do, they do love to sunbathe, so that's something else to help them keep them warm in the in the winter, and uh, I need to figure that out. Now, I do let them outside and on any warm days. You see the, the doors are open, you know, to the, to the pen as well as the house, but in the winter, they don't like to walk in the snow too much, so they're not going to come out. They will come out on occasion, but once in a while when they do come out, you got to really watch the predator, you know, especially aerial predators. In the summer, the trees have leaves, and uh, there's plants and bushes and things they can get under. In the winter, a lot of that's gone, and so they're, you know, up against the silhouette of white snow, they're definitely uh, at more risk of, of, of aerial predators and not having any place to hide or to get under if, uh, if they are attacked. So I talked in my last video that adult cats really are not a problem with adult chickens. So I do let the, the cats in here, and they'll cruise through the house and the pen, and they will take care of any mice. So they don't, I don't leave them in here, obviously, all the time, but if they want to come in, especially Coquette, you know, I'll let her in because I know she's not going to damage, do any harm to the chickens, and uh, and she can be in here and, and snag any mice uh, that might uh, show up. Yeah, so I'm just talking about cats and chickens and mice. Here we go. Theo decided to come check out the the pen and see what's here. So yeah, they uh, they're not a threat to the uh, to the adult chickens. At least these two cats, uh, Coquette and, and Theo. Thing is way too small. Uh, she wouldn't be of any threat. I'm, the orange one, I'm still debating. Willow, uh, that one will be, he's the kind of the aggressive one. We'll, uh, we'll kind of fight with Theo sometimes, start the fights anyway. So so I wouldn't probably let him in here, uh, but uh, he's not showing any aggression aggression to my children, although the neighbor is uh, suspicious that he might be a, a murderer with his <laughs> chicken coop. But I don't think so, but I'm not going to take any chances. But yeah, Theo will be in here, and uh, if there's any mice, uh, yeah, these cats will take care of them on the outside, and once in a while, I let them in, and they can uh, take care of them on the inside of the pen, too. Now, one of my big benefits of having chickens, obviously, is the eggs, and I can raise meat chickens for meat if I so choose to. I'm not sure if I will do that in the future, but they are my source of compost. And so these chickens will naturally, as they root through uh, the pen, uh, I just keep throwing a different organic matter in here. They're going to shred it up and manure in it, and that'll be the basis of my fertility for the garden. So, uh, yeah, i got to really improve my compost situation down here, and this is... A critical element for me being able to make enough compost for my needs and that's really a difficult thing because it's even a half acre it's it's very hard to make enough compost to do all that you need without having to buy buy inputs well i hope this video has been uh, helpful for you today and uh just want to kind of do a quick recap uh, just for the the most important steps first is be prepared okay do not buy chickens until you have housing and you have food and shelter all figured out and a, and a safe place for them to be away from predators 
and you have the food containers and the water containers that you need to be successful. You know, when you start chickens, you know, don't do it in the winter, okay? Do it in the spring, you know, raise them. You know, you can learn how to raise them again from, from eggs. You could hatch eggs, you could have chicks, you could have pullets, which is immature birds. And then you just raise them on different types of feed until they get to mature, and then you switch their feed out uh, so that they have the right amount of uh, proteins and calciums in the feed to lay a lot of delicious eggs. Um, you know, for 30 years, I've, you know, off and on, you know, you go through cycles of not having eggs, but I've had through cycles where I've had so many eggs, I was just giving them to people. And, and you make a lot of friends that way, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun thing. But feed is not, you know, inexpensive. Uh, so the more you can supplement with natural foods from the garden, you know, plant life and and, uh, and grow certain plants and worms and, and uh, those type of things uh, and have insects, so, you know, let them out in the yard, let them be little predators for you, so it'll help with your, your bug problems too. So anyway, be prepared, okay? Make sure that you're gonna be around, okay? Make sure that you know, you know, what kind of systems you need in place to deal with any issues that come up with redu through redundancy for periods of time where you may unexpectedly or you know, expectedly be gone. You need to make sure you have the right chicken breeds. You need to make sure you have the right size structure for the amount of birds you have. You need to give them activities. You need to keep them draft free and dry. That's the most important thing. Chickens tolerate cold just fine, so don't worry so much about that. In the summer though, make sure you have plenty of ventilation and plenty of water also, uh, because uh, yeah, they need that. Make sure you keep the, you know, you're not cleaning the coop in the winter through the deep uh, litter system. You're just laying more and more layers of bedding and then that'll just sit there and kind of, you know, warm up a little bit as it composts in the winter. And then in the spring, you pull all that material out. Again, I like a coop that I can walk into so I can clean it very easily and pull all that material out, throw it in my compost bin, and in the fall, I'll have a, you know, compost to spread on the garden. So, yeah, chickens are a critical component to any type of a homestead. Uh, again, they eat bugs. You know, they take care of a lot of those issues. They eat, you know, your weeds. They eat pretty much any green material, your kitchen waste or whatever you have. Uh, they'll, they'll eat through that they'll even eat you know they're carnivores so they'll eat meat too but i just don't do, i don't put meat out uh, that's something i just don't do because of flies and other types of uh, critters that'll uh, it could attract but uh yeah but be prepared make sure you're ready uh for chickens especially when winter comes because uh, it's uh, access is sometimes a problem again five feet of snow it's even hard to walk to the coop let alone to carry feed and do all those things so make sure you're all stocked up make sure you have plenty of what you need uh keep improving your redundancies uh and just making sure you're always checking on your chickens as much as you can. And find a friend in the neighborhood uh, or, or a friend's kid that'll uh, come check on them if you are, have an emergency or something happens and you're not able to be around. So anyway, again, I hope this video was helpful for you. Shows you what I'm doing again, but I've had chickens for 30 years and I did not have them down here until the third winter because I was not prepared. I did not have the infrastructure in place, but now I do and uh, I should have a, a you know, a pretty good setup here. Again, I'm going into winter with very few chickens, so I'm not really too worried about it because even if my, you know, my redundancy isn't complete, uh, three chickens, it takes a long time for three chickens to go through food and water. But if my water freezes, the power goes out, I got a problem. And so I need to figure that out. Well, thanks for watching this video again. And uh, if there's any questions, please throw them in the comments. Thank you.